When asked what comes to mind when we hear the word healthcare, most of us are probably thinking about the hospital or the clinic or even our personal primary care physicians and the last time we went to see them, right? Now, I want you to take that scene in your head and imagine for a second that you are wearing the white coat this time. You're a busy primary care physician or an ER doctor and all of a sudden you have two patients show up. You go in and check on patient one and you find them nearly unconscious, out of breath, with an extremely high body temperature at about 105 and complaining of severe headaches and nausea. While your team stabilizes patient one, you check in on patient two and you find them with a slowly rising temperature, similar to patient, not as high as patient one, but similar headaches and nausea and they're drenched in sweat. At first, you're a little bit perplexed. What could be causing these eerily similar symptoms between both of these patients and without any signs of infection? But aha, you smartly noted that patient one, despite having such a high body temperature, is not sweating at all, while patient two is drenched. And thus, you figured it out. Patient one is suffering from a heat stroke while patient two is suffering from heat exhaustion. Let's connect these dots. For those who don't know, heat stroke is the more advanced form of heat exhaustion, and it can cause death or permanent disability. So if patient two's conditions are not treated soon enough, they can reach the level of patient one, which is a heat stroke. Now, I'm going to risk a little bit of a HIPAA violation and tell you that patient one's name is Earth, and patient two's is mankind. You see, planet Earth, our home, it's not so different from us after all, and what connects us is our health. As the Earth currently suffers from this heat stroke of planetary significance with things like climate change and other environmental issues, so do we. And the impact on human health is not that far behind. In fact, that's a reality for doctors all around the world who, who are seeing an uptick of climate related medical cases across all specialties. But this seemingly simple connection between environment and health still isn't something that is directly connected enough. As, as someone who has always dreamed of becoming a physician in my entire life, at the same time I've always had a love for the environment, I myself didn't put it together until just some years ago. It was that time in my life where I had to decide what major I was going to be pursuing in college and I couldn't decide between environmental science or the traditional pre-medical track through biology or biochemistry. And as I did my frantic searching on many college websites, I came across something called environmental health science. And as you can imagine, I was intrigued. I knew this had to be the one. It was basically love at first sight. Just seeing the names of two of my biggest passions together, it made something click. It sparked something in me, a fire of reflection, if you will. And the more I actually reflected and thought about what environmental health science actually is, the more it made sense to me. Growing up, I had always wondered why was it that many of my very own family members back home in the country of Pakistan were suffering from environmentally related chronic health conditions. But with this new lens of environmental health, the root cause became much more clear. And though I loved visiting every time, I found that in every one of my fondest memories and trips, there was always some sort of environmental issue impacting our health, whether it was the contaminated tap water that made us sick, or the food we were told not to eat, or even breathing the air that exacerbated my asthma. And so I finally realized that this juxtaposition of environment and health, as it's commonly seen to be, is not so much of a juxtaposition. Rather, it's two sides of the same coin. And so I arrived at this question of, why is it that this direct link between environment and health is not as well known as it seems it needed to be? And to find the answer, I committed myself to investigating this relationship from every angle that I could, which for me meant through research and experiences in addition to my education in environmental health. Now from the research angle, I was absolutely fascinated as I found evidence of this link between environment and health in so many different disciplines. Like microbiology, for example, where I looked into atmospheric wind currents from the Sahara Desert and how they impacted growth rates of certain pathogens and infection rates in the United States. Or chemistry, where I looked into the placement and presence of healthcare facilities 
and their impacts on, on the pharmaceutical concentrations of surrounding water bodies and in drinking water. At the same time, building on this research, I wanted to seek out this link between environment and health in a more direct setting. So I set out to volunteer and observe physicians at clinics, where I watched in dismay as the statistic that the United States healthcare system has historically been among the largest contributors to the United States carcinogenic dioxin emissions because of the incineration of biohazardous waste manifested right before me as I watched things like exam table paper, simple packaging, and other plastics being improperly disposed of in biohazardous waste bins after every single patient. Or the statistic that pharmaceutical residues had been detected in the drinking water of nearly 41 million people around the country again came to life right in front of me as I watched certain medications being wrongfully disposed of down the drain after every single patient. And these occurrences, they were not anomalies by any means. I also saw the same practices and the same resulting health conditions among minority populations in the country of Croatia during a study abroad, just as I did in Pakistan and here in the United States. To top it all off, I was learning more and more about this extensive environmental footprint of healthcare in my education, where I learned that if the United States healthcare system were a country, it would be ranked 13th in the world for greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than the entire United Kingdom. Just the perfect icing on the cake, right? Or should I say the perfect lack of ice on her planet? As I learned more and more with every new step, with every new discovery, I found myself in this perpetual state of shock, again and again arriving at this question of why is no one talking about this? And more specifically, how is it that healthcare, the very institution that is so central to all of our lives, how is it that in the very care that is being provided, more harm is being done to all of us, and especially to those people who have the least access to that care? making it so much more of a larger environmental and social justice issue. It became clear to me that these occurrences, no matter where they were happening around the world, represented a microcosm of a larger medical culture that lacked sustainability, not only in the physical infrastructure of healthcare systems, but also in our own understanding of our health. And that was a very scary realization to me especially as a rising medical student, knowing that I would be going into this field one day and practicing within this unsustainable culture. But what I realized in the midst of exploring healthcare's environmental and social footprints is that though it felt like I was discovering this never-ending interconnected network of problems, in actuality, I was discovering an even bigger network of opportunities and potential and with healthcare being at the center of it all. And if there was anything to appreciate from all of this, it is this theme of connectivity that kind of emerges from the soil, if you will. At every step of the way, I was discovering new connections between things that I never thought could be connected, like the trash we throw away and cancer statistics, or types of cars we drive and asthma prevalence. Just like each of these connections inform us about the negative impacts of certain practices, they can similarly be transformed into connections that allow us and push us to make targeted, tangible changes. And that right there was my defining moment. I knew I had to do something to harvest all of this potential for positive change, so I decided to take local action by starting the Sustainable Healthcare Initiative at the University of Georgia. I reached out to the local university health center and pitched this idea of sustainable health care and how it could really make a difference in the health of our community. And with the help of many mentors from the, the health center and the UGA Office of Sustainability, we were able to identify many new initiatives that we could begin to implement to enhance sustainability at the health center. Among these initiatives, my favorite one was analyzing biohazardous waste because it was one of those issues that I had seen in my own clinical experiences that I mentioned earlier. And yes, this meant that I had the opportunity 
to go dumpster diving in medical waste. And trust me, it's a lot more fun and interesting than you might think. Because our waste, it really tells us a story about how, where, and why this, where, where this waste was coming from. And it allowed us to experiment with creative solutions like providing recycling bins inside of exam rooms or moving biohazardous waste bins inside of cupboards just simply to encourage people to think before they throw. Some of the other initiatives included removing triclosan containing soap, which by the way is a toxic chemical found in many soaps, or introducing composting to reduce food waste. And perhaps the most important thing, the Health Center now has an official sustainability committee that continuously works to improve sustainability in the practices of the Health Center. Now, these initiatives seem very small and the impact of them is not necessarily something we can see in the short term. But with that lens of connectivity in mind, the impact becomes exponentially larger and so much more meaningful. Still, I think even more impactful than those initiatives themselves is that spark. That same spark that lit the fire inside of me when I first found out about environmental health now had lit the fire inside of local health professionals, empowering them to think more deeply about the role of environment and health and how they could provide more holistic care for their patients. And I think that really speaks to the power of something called the physician-patient relationship. Because yes, on one hand we have this growing movement of environmental sustainability and healthcare decarbonization within the physical structure and practice of a healthcare system. But on the other hand, we have this physician-patient relationship, which with sustainability incorporated into those treatments, into those conversations, into the advice, becomes the locus of health advocacy on every level, through every determinant, and for all people. It means that in this cycle of treatment, research, prevention, and all of the other things that make up this equation that we call healthcare, sustainability allows us to make space for health equity, for justice, for improved health literacy, for root cause based medicine, and an overall long term approach to truly doing no harm. So, yet again, we've discovered a new meaningful connection within the realm of environmental health with this physician-patient relationship. But this one is a little bit different. It's less of a cause and effect. This one goes both ways and sparks can fly in both directions, if you will. And that's where you and I come in. We have the power to reflect, to connect, and then to light that fire in the communities around us and even in our healthcare providers. And that's something that I wish I had known and acted upon earlier because it has really changed the way that I approach my health. As a teenager in high school, I suffered from severe cystic acne and over the course of a year or two, I had tried nearly everything from proactive to antibiotics to all sorts of remedies, yet nothing worked. But the moment I began to incorporate sustainability by reflecting over my lifestyle, by connecting the different ways I could improve the environment around me and use those connections as my medicine, the effects were astonishing. Now, I know what works for me may not work for everyone else, but this general idea of sustainability being a preventative measure, along with the power of connection and reflection that come with it, it's no secret. It's proven that exposure to nature can reduce blood pressure and stress. Plant-based diets can prevent and reduce heart diseases and diabetes. Even bigger than that, reducing your waste can help reduce landfill methane emissions, which then subsequently helps reduce the health impacts of climate change. Planting trees and pollinators in your garden can improve the quality of the air that you breathe and the food that you eat. Detoxifying your home from chemicals like PFAS and flame retardants can help reduce chronic disease burden. And these are just a couple of examples. The list could go on and on. The bottom line is that sustainability is just as much of a medical term as it is an environmental, economic, 
or even social one. And it rightfully belongs in the conversations between you and your doctor. And in the face of major environmental health challenges like climate change, which has impacts ranging from cardiovascular and respiratory diseases to mental health and even to infectious diseases like COVID-19, not to mention the increasing food and water scarcity and increasing severity of extreme weather events, it is important now more than ever for all of us to make this connection between environment and health and to treat this, the, the health of the environment as an extension of our own, whether you are a healthcare provider or a receiver. So the next time you make a sustainable switch, no matter how small it may be, know that it's not just good for the environment, it's also good for you and your health and possibly everyone around you. After all of this reflecting and connecting, I hope it's become clear to you that healthcare is at the forefront of sustainability and sustainability is at the forefront of healthcare. This is a relationship that as a rising medical student, I hope to incorporate into my education and my future practice so that one day my services can extend beyond the walls of the clinic and so that I can provide a more holistic form of care for my future patients. But these hopes and changes, they don't have to be so far into the future. These intersectional solutions exist now and the connectivity is already there for us, in our favor, for us to appreciate. But it's up to us whether we act on it or not. Whether we prevent our heat exhaustion from turning into that heat stroke. Now you may not be wearing a white coat like you were in the scenario at the beginning, or you may not have any of those fancy letters behind your name that designate you as a healthcare professional, but we are all doctors of the environment around us. And the way we treat it is effectively the way we are treating ourselves. Thank you.